everybody and welcome to the last edition of Make It March. This has been um, a live video series for the month of March featuring some of my finished objects and whips. So finished objects also known as FOs and whips also known as works in progress. How is everyone doing today? You can always um, chime in in the comments. Let us know where you're watching us from, what the weather's like. Have you had a good week? The weather's been great up here until today. Now we're going back into the cold and icy section after a week of sunshine and double digit temperatures. Hi Rhonda, hi Diane. Hi Sharon. So I'm basically just showing you what I've been working on and what will be in the store as featured shop samples when we can all start coming in shopping again. And this is just to inspire your own creative journey and give you some fresh ideas for yarn choices and projects. So I will show you first what my latest whip is. And I have to apologize, you're going to hear telephone ringing and some noise from next door. We have Mana Food Bank next door and it's a very busy day for them because they're getting the Easter hampers ready for pickup and delivery for next week. So I've been working on a very small project while I'm getting ready to cast on a different project. And... Um, this is going to be a hat. It's called Lichen the Lichen. So I have done the ribbing, which will be turned up. And I'll bring it closer to the camera so you can see it. And I'm working with two different yarns, not two strands together. I'm working one row with one color and then a couple of rows with the main color. So my main color is all natural, undyed, llama worsted, which I can never get enough of. It's beautiful to work with. It just feels so natural and rustic, and you can feel the lanolin that's still in the fiber. And I'm working on 3.25 millimeter needles for the ribbing and a four millimeter for the main part. So this is the actual pattern. It really looks nice with a solid and then a multicolor for the contrast. And so far I've knit about an inch and a half of pattern. Really fun stitch to do. You never get bored of doing it. It makes these little clusters, which should resemble lichen on the granite rocks in Muskoka. So knit two purl two ribbing for the main brim, which you can fold back. And then I'm doing a few rows of knit in the main color and one row at a time in the multicolor. There you go. So that is my small whip on the needles in between other projects. It will match our shop sample, which is called Lichen the Lichen Towel. So I'm using the same colors. I happen to have lots left over from a 100 gram skein. That's why it's morphed into a towel. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Rhonda. So a close up of the cowl after it's blocked, you'll see that the stitches really bloom and the color starts to drift. So this is a great uh, way to use variegated yarns. If you find that they pool, uh, pooling is referring to getting clumps of one color in an area when you're knitting it plain on its own. But when you're doing a stitch like this and it's broken up with a contrast color, you don't get the pooling you get more of a color drift. So this one has shades of denim, sunshine yellow, coral, and cream, and then it's against the natural 
llama. For those of you who do not like the, um, the subdued colors, we also have it in, this one is called Chickadee. So it has a bright pop of lime green, sky blue, the denim again, and an earthy brown and a cream. And a very lively one called Hummingbird, which has the aqua, the lime green, some pops of um, cherry pink, and periwinkle blue, and a bright yellow. And if you're a fan of pink, then you can never go wrong with Flamingo. So there you've got the cherry pink, the paler pink, and a warm orange, and charcoal. So this would be the contrast color. And then for the natural llama, we have it in four colors, totally undyed. So some tend to be a bit more into the gray family and some are into the warmer beige family. And then the top right is the natural cream. It is a DK weight, 100 grams. And I'm pretty sure that if you knit the hat, you'd have enough left over to do the cowl. I think some of you may have have knit both, so maybe you can chime in and let me know if I'm telling the truth, if you really do have enough with 100 gram of your contrast, 100 gram of your mane, to do both the cowl and the hat. This may look small, it's just because I'm knitting on a short circular needle, which I find is easier for me to knit faster, but it will be an adult size when it's blocked. And then I also have another work in progress to show you. Um, if you're wondering about the patterns, I'll post the links down below after the video airs. And I know you're all wondering about this one. I'm going to get to that one. So I have been also working on my granny stripe blanket, which is crocheted. With, my, with all my leftover fingering weight and sock weight yarns. So I think now I am probably halfway to the finished length that I want for a little girl's birthday gift. And this has many, many different leftover yarns in it. Memories of all my favorite sock projects, cowl projects, fingerless knits, and even a few sweater projects. I'm trying to stay in a little girl's color palette. And then every time I finish 16 rows, I throw in a couple rows of that soft kid mohair, the fluff yarn. So you can see here. I put in some in the cream, and then I alternated with the pale blue, and then I'll go back to the cream and the pale blue. So this is a very simple crochet pattern. It's a free pattern on Ravelry, and I'll post the link below, of course. It's worked on whatever size hook you want to work it on, and whatever width of stitches you want to work with. Um, I have chosen a four millimeter hook to work with fingering weight yarn. Uh, I had a customer today who's doing hers in worsted weight yarn and she is using a six millimeter hook. There's many ways you can work the pattern. It's a basic recipe and then you can just do whatever you like. Yes, Diane, I think she will lo love it. I have to finish it for June, which is her birthday month. So again, it's my in-between project. When I'm tired of working on a knit in-between project, I can go to crochet. And for those of you who crochet, you know it goes extremely fast. So every row of crochet in this blanket is like doing three or four rows of this sort of tension and knitting. So you get a really nice boost 
of productivity. And I guess I will just get right to a finished object. So I posted a little teaser pic today on Facebook of the lace work. This is the poncho that I was showing partially knit last Friday and I did finish it over last weekend. It knits up super quick, 6.5 millimeter needles if you can believe it, for a very lightweight uh, sport to DK weight yarn. Uh, the secret to knitting this poncho and getting a really nice result is you have to really think of your blend. Either work with a pure linen or a linen blend because you need that loose effect and you need it to drape nicely. You don't want it to hang so that the edges curl up at the bottom and you don't want it to have the weight of a pure cotton. So this is a linen blend with some cotton and some bamboo. And we have lots of beautiful colors so I had a hard time deciding what color to do it in but I had that coral theme on my mind from seeing coral in some of the um, online fashion stores. So it turned out great. It is four balls, 50 grams, and it's knit all in one piece. There is a seam here that you have to sew up after. I'll spin it around so you can see. And that creates an armhole and a side bend. Uh, the borders are knit in garter stitch as you go. So you're casting on at this side and you're knitting across all in one piece. When you get to a certain measurement, you have to divide so that you're working on the front and that will divide for the neckline. And then the back is left on a needle. And once you finish the front measurement to finish the neckline width, then you go back and work the same pattern on the back. And then the two pieces will meet up and they merrily knit themselves together the rest of the way. So it's got that nice asymmetric look, which is very popular, and it's so versatile. I was um, hoping to get some outfits from our vintage clothing store in the building today, but she's closed so that I could show you what it looks like over a sleeveless sundress, over a loose t-shirt. So I found a t-shirt in the store, or maybe over a longer tunic. You could wear it over long sleeves, tank tops, Maybe even a bathing suit cover up if it was a little bit longer. It is very adjustable. Um, so the sizing is extra small to small. That's the one I've knit. And that gives you a width of 51 inches and a length of 19 inches. Or you can do the next size, which is medium to large. And that would give you a width of 54 inches. Remember, you want it to have lots of positive ease because you have to be able to cover one arm and then have it drape over the shoulder, almost down to the elbow. So medium to large is 54 inches wide, 21 inches long, and large to extra large will fit 57 inches around. And 23 inches in length but again it's so adjustable because if you're casting on here once you finish the the fancy work pattern there's two different um, pattern stitches in here then you could just add in extra width or, or extra rows here before you start shaping the neck and you can also make the neck wider or narrower. So I'm going to share a few tips about the pattern. It is called Oasis and it's um, a Ravelry pattern. It's been around for probably about four or five years and I've had it in my queue so I finally had some time to knit it. And it's uh, designed by Yumiko Alexander. Most of her designs on Ravelry, Ravelry, if you take a look, are all asymmetric and very flowy and loose. So that really fits the theme for this year because I think we're transitioning well from indoor lounge wear from the winter to loose, dressy cover-ups for spring and summer. Hi, Selena. Hi, Lorraine. 
Um, so yes, it is knit on a 6.5 millimeter. You can use straight needle or you can use circular. The only fancy stitch that you may not have done before is this cable stitch, which I call a witch's broomstick cable. You're doing an elongated double yarn over to create the long stitch and then you're going to slide your stitches back and rearrange them so you can do a, a six stitch cable. Well explained. I think she even gives you a video link to a tutorial. Um, and then you've got the eyelet border at the top and at the bottom of the pattern section. Eyelets are very simple. It's just a couple rows of garter stitch to frame it and then the next row is yarn over and knit two together all the way across. So I'll try to spin it around so you can see the back and the front are identical. And it has a nice drapey neckline. So this side has the armhole. Armhole, a short little seam, they tell you what measurement to sew and then the opening and then the front again with that lovely neckline very dressy and then the opposite side it just sort of sits and covers the shoulder you could even put it up like this and create more of a drapey cowl or shawl So a very versatile piece. I'm sure everybody's going to love this one as we get into our warmer months because of the built-in air conditioning and then also the very airy fabric it creates. Um, so she does have you do a slip stitch along the garter stitch border. And that is a great feature because it gives the garter stitch more elasticity. It's not going to pull in across the stomach and the hip. And it does keep the edge nice and straight. There's no bumpy little purl stitch. Even though it's garter stitch, it looks like a little purl stitch at the edge usually. So that's a great feature to the design. And the only tips I could come up with were I think the neckline maybe is a little bit too wide for the smaller size, depending how you like to wear it. If you like to wear it off one shoulder or have this big dip here, then the neckline is fine. But I think for some of us who want the neckline a little bit more traditional and closed in, um, maybe knitting less rows than what she recommends. You could do four rows less and that would give you about an inch and a half less here. So that's a good little tip if you're thinking of knitting it up. We have the kits in store and I'm going to show you all the colors. Um, I think I counted about 12 colors. So to do this size here and the next size, so extra small to small and then medium to large, the, um, the kit works out to, got to do some math quickly, about $33. So that's very affordable for that type of cover up in a quality yarn. So the color I've used is the top one, coral, and then we have that beautiful sunshine gold, aqua blue, sky blue, pale pink, and silver. And these yarns really have a nice um, sheen to them. And then the second collection of colors has the most stunning red at the top. Really nice deep olive green. A smoky green. So that has a gray undertone. The winter white. The deep taupe. And black is black. So we will have the kits available in all the colors that are shown here. And then for some of you who want to 
cap outside of the box and maybe try it in a pure linen, which is what the um, designer worked with originally. We do have four shades in the pure linen and they are quite earthy and natural. We have a really nice deep rusty red. white and then a dark khaki color with an olive undertone and that nice sand linen shade sandy beige so those are the four shades in the pure linen you don't have to make any changes to the pattern in terms of needle size or number of stitches. It will all work out um, exactly to the same size as this one. The only difference is when you work with pure linen, um, you get more of a, a stringy open texture. So the stitches won't fill, fill in quite as nicely as this. And um, it'll have even more of an airy effect. So those are your choices, pure linen or partial linen. And um, so what does everyone think? Is this something that they would wear? Or would you knit it for a friend or a family member or keep it for yourself? Diane, the yarn is called Fiori. It is a yarn that you've worked with before. I think it's one of the yarns that you really like for the summertime. It is very classic. Okay, so I think what I'll work, work towards now is what you're also really waiting for. Um, this was a finished object too called Milo. And I showed it to you last week. It's um, Oh, I think I have a few knocks at the door. Um, I'll be right back. One second, please. So, oh, okay, so I, I promised I would show all the colors for our upcoming spring knit along, which is starting next Friday. And it is called Dancing Dragonflies. And it is going to be a pair of mittens. So there is a color picture here. You can also see a picture on our events page. These are knit in a fingering weight merino or merino blend on a 2.5 millimeter, either double point needles or circular. We'll get into that more in, in our knit along. I'm just giving you kind of the overview of what, uh, what it'll be all about. So the knit along will start next Friday at 3 p.m. live and um, we'll go every Friday during the month of April, 3 p.m. Don't worry if you cannot join us live because the video does stay in the video section forever on Facebook and you can also access it in the event page and um, we will have a grand prize draw so anybody who feels like participating to join the knit along all you have to do is order the yarn which I'm going to show the colors in a while and that will include the pattern. If you prefer to um, order your pattern direct from Ravelry, you'll need a PayPal account or a credit card to uh, purchase it. If you prefer to order the pattern with the kit, then we will include that in your package. It's the same price either way. Uh, there's two different yarns that we're going to feature. One is hand dyed by a Canadian dyer and the other is by Malabrigo, also hand dyed, but not a Canadian dyer. And um, there will be 
a free gift to everybody who signs up, orders their kit before the start date. So I think those are all the, the points I wanted to mention. Um, yeah, so anyone who knows how to knit on double point needle will be feeling comfortable with this project. You will learn possibly a few new techniques. There is a Latvian braid. We may add another element to the mittens as an option that you might like to um, you might like to do or pass on. So anybody who has uh, the yarn before the start date, please wait till we do the cast on live video because there may be some options that you can think about and. If you've already cast on, then you miss out on those options. Is the blend linen softer to knit with? Uh, Selena, yes. If you're knitting with a linen blend that has some cotton and bamboo in it, it's much softer on the hands, softer to wear. And um, I think you find that your tension knits up a bit more consistent. If you're knitting with a pure linen, it's a very stringy type of yarn. It's probably the coolest fiber that there is in the summer though, so it does have many advantages. It has its own relaxing memory. So when it's blocked, what looks like a squiggly mess of uneven stitches will even out nicely. So you have to have faith that when you soak it in the Eucalyptus wool wash after, it will really come out nicely. I do have a, a sweater in the store that's knit in the pure linen, so I'll bring that to the camera so you can see the difference of the pure linen knit up compared to the blend. And then I'll show all the colors for the knit along. So this is the bowl and tea knit in the pure linen and it's on a much tighter gauge, a smaller needle than what our poncho is knit on. So this would be knit on about a three and three quarter. The poncho would be knit on a 6.5. So you can imagine this is already quite transparent and the lacy part up here so you get an even more transparent effect on a 6.5. So I hope that gives you an idea of the difference between the fibers. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show you the color combinations live because it's always nice to see them on a video. It's almost like being here in the store. But then I have po I will post a picture in the events page. I've taken photos of the groupings of the different combos. So that will be probably in the next hour if you want to see them on. Um, the event page and there will be 16 color combos all together. It seems like a lot but um, everybody has different colors that they prefer and because there's two colors there's a main and a contrast color that just makes more variables. So I'm going to bring all the colors up to the camera. So starting with Riverside Studio, which is our Canadian dyer. This is the gorgeous cashmere merino nylon blend. So we have the medium charcoal, which would work as the main color. So I'm going to go through all the colors that would work with the gray. And keep in mind that your dragonflies do not have to look like actual dragonflies. You can be as abstract as you like. So that is in no particular order. That's just one of the combos. When you look at the post, you will see that I've numbered the combos. Now this one with the gray is giving you a deeper royal purple a dark indigo blue, teal, and then the brighter green. That's 
a beautiful one. It's very hard to pick. I'm having a hard time picking my combo. And this is a really bright purple called Larkspur. And then for those of you who like the, um, the fiery colors, this is a very warm medium red with pinky undertones and some bits of gray. So they would coordinate well together. And this one is called Iris. Now I think this one is the closest color dyed to the original one in the designer pattern. So this one gives you that periwinkle blue and green, spring green, and it pairs well with the gray. And then we've got one that is um, speckled in medium purple, dark purple, teal, periwinkle. Okay, so those are the ones that um, <clears throat> pair nicely with the gray. And now we're going to go back through and show how they look with the indigo blue instead of the gray. So I'm showing you the same contrast colors, but I've changed the main color. So the indigo blue goes into a really dark midnight blue. It's a semi-solid. still looking at the dark blue for the main color. forgotten if I've shown you this one. There should be altogether six contrast colors from Riverside Yarns and two in the main color. So it's either choosing the medium gray or the navy for your base and then one of the six contrast colors. For those of you who have not knit with Riverside um, Studio Yarns, her merino cashmere nylon base is just so decadent. It's very hard to resist. Now I'm going to show you the color combinations for the substitute yarn, which is a merino, and it is Malabrigo Superwash Merino, so it's machine washable in cold water. So we have two base colors for the Malabrigo. We've got one called Soot, which is a dark gray, and then we have a jet black. The jet black will, of course, be closer to what the designer used in her original pattern. But that doesn't mean we can't change it up. Okay, so we've got the Soot with this beautiful periwinkle, turquoise, That's a nice summer shade. And then again, the soot gray with a green blue mix. And this is a lovely one too. It has pops of periwinkle, shades of green, denim blue, and almost an aquamarine there too. And 
this is gorgeous. This has corals, hot, hot fuchsia pink. And that would give a really nice contrast against the soot gray. And then we have a dewberry color, which is deep mystical purple shade into a bit of black. So very dark and dramatic. So now I will go through the same five contrast colors, but now we're pairing them with the jet black. You can't get any blacker than this shade from Malabrigo. So this is the pretty periwinkle blue teal aquamix. And this is now the green with blue undertones, three shades of green mixed with the jet black. And the black with the dewberry. It's almost like a neon purple on camera. It does have some dark gradual shading in it. Not all bright. And then this one has shades of violet, blue, green. Again with the black. You see that purple there? Lots of interest. And then the black against that really vivid hot pink and coral. It's not really showing up on camera, but there is a nice um, flamingo shade here and a sunset coral. Okay, so those are all the combinations. Um, the yardage is so good on the 100 gram skeins that I've shown you that you would be able to knit two pairs of mitts. So if you're deciding on colors and you're not 100% sure, then maybe think about what color you would knit for a friend or family member, what colors they like, and then try to pick the commonality so you get the same shades that you would love and they would love and then you get an extra pair of mitts thrown into the deal yes nancy it is a gorgeous yarn for those of you who have not worked with either the malabrigo which is super bouncy on the needles and it just feels so plush or the riverside cashmere merino blend you're really in for a treat so i hope that um, you can join us for the knit along uh, I know you probably have a lot of projects already on your needles. So this is a very small project and I would say it is intermediate level because of the stranding. You're going to be following a chart, but the thumb is a very simple thumb to do. It's not the increase style gusset, which takes a lot more concentration. And then there is some decreasing at the top of the mitt. So it'll be a fun project and then it will welcome us into spring and summer because of the dragonfly theme and as well we might have a, a ready-made gift for winter. I'm already wearing my dragonfly necklace to get ready for the event. So I think that's everything I can show you today. Um, it's a really rainy wet day here in Muskoka and I think we're in for some freezing rain later. I'm going to be here till about 5 p.m. today. So if you have any questions or order requests, please feel free to call the shop or send me a message on Facebook. I'll go through the comments and answer the comments below the video. Thanks everybody for watching and um, I hope to see you next week for the cast, cast on day for our Dancing Dragonflies knit-alongs.